What's up everyone, welcome to Akuma Studies and today we're discussing the history of timekeeping devices. As horologists, as watch lovers, as you know, humans in general, it's it's very important for us to understand how we got how we get to this point of today of uh, quartz wristwatches on my wrist or atomic clocks and on satellites keeping time for um, I don't know if they're on satellites but keeping time for the internet and you know uh, all this stuff right and humans for thousands of years have been using devices to tell time obelisks for example uh, if you're, if you're unfamiliar with obelisks, they're just these giant, wonderful I th obsidian, I have limestone uh, structures. Basically, just giant erected poles <laughs> um, that were. I th they were mostly used as I think as like a, a, a symbol of religion and of, of pride of like our civilization is dope. But they're also they're basically just giant giant sun clocks or giant sundials. Another form of, uh, we'll get into sundials a little bit later. Another form of uh, a clock is a water clock. A water clock is, imagine imagine a water bottle, right? You poke a little hole in the water bottle, and you just kind of wait there and watch the water drip out from it. And then you think, like, just imagine you did that about 20 times. You'll probably, you if you refill the water bottle and let it watch out. You know, after about 20 times, you probably start to understand, okay, about, for Okay, it takes about this amount of time, right? Okay, I'll go to work for until this water bottle drips out. Do you see what I'm saying? But they, uh, there was bowls, there were, uh, I just think like a clay pot with a hole in it and it would drip out and they would use that to regulate time for the day. These were especially important because sundials were only able to be used when it was sunny out. When it, yeah, once again, when it was sunny out, when it was daytime. But just imagine you're in your home and it's nighttime. Water clocks they're 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 very much uh, portable. Um, same thing with with uh, but the thing is with sundials, it, you, a sundial is, is a very very complicated thing. You, you ha the, 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 if you want it to be like accurate, you're gonna have to like recalibrate it for the season where you are in the world. If you're traveling from this location to that location, it's it's gonna be the calculations are gonna be very very different. So water clocks are just kind of an easy way to. Uh, just be like, okay, when this runs out, that's the certain time. These these have been in existence and have been used since 2000 BC. So these are very, very old ways of telling time. Other devices include the candle clock, uh, which is basically just a, a candlestick. And you have different measurements on that candlestick. And as it burns down, you go, okay, this block, this block, and this block of time. Because it, it doesn't, you can't really give these things service. You can't be like, um... You know, this candlestick burns for exactly one hour, 13 seconds. You can't really do that. It's more like, I burn this candle clock, and for each line uh, that I've marked, you know, that is a time block within my sphere of time. Because time, for all of these different civilizations, and even for us, in different areas, is different. They might use blocks on, on a candle. They might use a, a water jug to fill out, to empty out in water. We might use hours and... Even people from different regions might look at time in a different way. Because, for example, in, in Latin America, when there's a party, well, I don't want to say all of Latin America, but in general, when there's a party, and you say it starts at 5, in most people's brains, that, mean it starts, that means it starts at 6.37. Right? It's not like that, for example, here where I live in Seattle. Anywho. Uh, the candle clocks were interesting, I think, because it, it, just, it shows kind of how simple it is uh, to find like a time-telling device. The sun... Um, something that kind of just like is like kind of is at a constant, right? Um, I wonder like if I was gonna start from scratch, what would I do to tell the time if I didn't have a watch, or you know, would I do like I guess water and candle and sun? I, I mean, what else really is there without getting too complicated? I don't know. But these candle clocks were used in England, and Mesopotamia, and in ancient China. Uh, sundials, or time sticks, were used in India, Tibet, parts of Europe, and are still found found around the world today. What I mean by that is, um, at parks, you might be able to find them. Um, they'll usually have the gnomons lined up with the Earth's, Earth's axis, and they'll probably be able to... They, they will even have these cool little kind of... I'll put a picture up, you know, 
kind of tell you like, oh, you know, you could because you can match the sundial with the uh, actual time. So that I think that's super du duper duper cool. But as mentioned earlier, sundials need a clear sunny day to tell the time, and need to be recalibrated throughout the season if not aligned with the Earth's axis. Don't forget that the North and South Hemispheres require different calculations also. So these are not, you can't use a sundial if you're a, if you're a traveler, period. Uh, the hourglass, I'm sure you guys all know about the hourglass. If you've ever played, um, what is it, is it Age of Empires 2? That had like the intro with the sun, with the hourglass, or it might be something else, sorry. Um, but, you know, these are mostly used in, in, in Europe, and these were very, very similar to water clocks. A tight hole, something in them that drips out, and you can kind of tell, okay, when this hourglass is out, that's a certain amount of time. I wonder if in this time period you'd go, okay, so for four uh, hourglass sands, I'll be doing this. I wonder if people thought about things like that. Or they just thought like Sunday, Sunday, sun, Sunday, Sunrise, or whatever. I don't really know. It's kind of interesting to think about. But here we go. The earliest known mechanical... Sorry, sorry about that. Not mechanical. The earliest known clock with intermittent, mo intermittent, intermittent motions was created in the 3rd century. In 3rd century, Greece was powered by water. Uh, this is kind of what, this is what the first form of a, of a more complex uh, timekeeping system. Uh, a lot of these were just really just like just think imagine like a, a, a tower clock um, just but being regulated by water for example or mercury and I don't really know how these worked I really it's just kind of unfathomable fathomable to me but uh, you had water clocks in Europe for they used to you know before mechanical um, Clocks, clocks came about, you know, everything was really, really regulated by water. There was more um, complex ones. Later, the Chinese created a mercury escapement. After them, Iranian engineers invented water clocks driven by gears and weights. So you're starting to see, you know, I mean, and that, I mean, that, I'll, I'll put a picture up of that device. And it's very, very complicated. Uh, I believe it was put in place to, to regulate, or maybe something had to do with prayer or, um, or something like that. I know that uh, a lot of the time, religious um, requirements of doing things at a certain time of day, uh, for a lot of this, a lot of science in the past was pushed be because of the requirements put on by religion. So, you know, people always conflate like religion not being, you know, scientific, but um, the, the relationship there is a lot more uh, what's the word? Code codependent, or I maybe that's not the right word, but it's a lot more. Um, I would say they have a, more of a positive impact, um, or it can have a very negative impact if you look at uh, uh, Islam in around one thousand one hundred one thousand. Uh, yeah, they they took a, a turn for uh, the worse, if you know what I mean. Anywho. The, this is the. I'll give you a little intro about the era of precision timekeeping. So the first mechanical clocks were developed in the 1300s by Europeans. These clocks had mechanical escapements. And by the way, escapement it just means like a, a controlled release of power. Um, and remember what I was saying earlier about you know just the sun moving at a, at a fairly constant rate. Uh, if you put a hole in a in a vase and the water drips out, you, it's, it's at a fairly constant rate. You have an hourglass and the sand drips out. It's it's at a fairly constant rate, and that was the thing. And that constant rate is what I, what I've found out after just doing a little bit of research. Research is what allows timekeeping to exist. Um, we'll get. I mean, quartz mechanical movements as you as we hear read here. These early escapements were called verge escapements. Uh, remember, unlike only your escapements, these did not require liquid to work. But anyways, just the constant control of something, whether that's the decaying of certain atoms, whether that's um, like light years, light years for example. Light years is the speed of light after one whole year, and that's like a t measurement of uh, of uh, of distance, but. It all, but light, right? Light moves at a constant rate. 
um, atoms decay, or certain atoms, I don't really know about this, I gotta do research, decay at a certain rate. Water dripping out of this decay, it does it at a certain rate. That is what allows the telling of time by us. So if you want to sound smart to your wife or your girlfriend or to that cute girl you asked on a date, say, hey, well, do you want to know what makes timekeeping possible? It's the constant... Oh god, I gotta look through my notes again. <laughs> oh, here we go. It's the controlled release of power. That's it, guys. That's all it takes to uh, to tell time. If we were, if we could see light, you know, travel, you know, I'm sure we'd go. Okay, the time it takes for that light to travel to my desk. Every time that happens, I'll do a push-up or something. You know, just magnificent. And I think earlier humans used uh, astronomy to kind of tell time, or like, for example, for longer dis chunks of time, like years and seasons. Because I think the ancient Sumers had a 360 day um, year. Or no, the ancient Egyptians had a 360 day year. And if you think about it, 365.25 and 360, it's not that far off. It's really not that far off. Um, I think they had it split between, I think, 60 day, 60 day months, and then um, oh yeah, something like that, but, I think, no, that, maybe, I don't remember, I think, no, they actually, they, I think they had a 365 day year, but anyways, just all of these different civilizations, um, they, they were, they were really quite smart, really quite smart, and they, and, um, you'll be surprised, a lot of the stuff we, we kind of take for granted today, I mean, a lot of other humans already figured it out, so, Thanks to you guys, and um, and you gotta guys, you really really take a look at this stuff. It's it's crazy interesting. Just go on Wikipedia, type in history of ancient timekeeping or whatever, and just go through all the loops, find out all the different all the different great minds throughout history who made like an amazing clock or made this crazy advancement and you'll find out a lot of these guys might have made like the first water escapement clock and then I'm, I'm making this up they might have done the first calculations to figure out how how long the earth was and they made distant voyages to throughout the Mediterranean and then they built great statues of whatever you know these guys were no joke these guys were filthy and um, you I think it's ver it's very important to kind of know about these great people and uh, how they have shaped our world today because a lot of us I mean their names are forgotten so uh, it's good to you know tip your hat you know like to, to all those people in the past anyways yeah my fur is going out a bit more I guess you guys never saw me with my afro but anyway thank you very very much for watching the video I encourage you to go do a little bit of digging yourself and Akuma out